the National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. Tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, The White Suit. It is 6 a.m., June 23, 1947. There is only one prisoner in the Live Oak County Jail. He is John Elliott Bascom, a notorious and dangerous gunman. In the anteroom connecting the jail with the sheriff's office, Deputy George Keaton dozes, snoring at the end of a long and uneventful night's duty. Miss George! Miss George! Oh. Oh, hello, Uncle Ben. You still here? Yes, sir. Yeah, but that prosecutor's office down the hall was powerful dirty. About ready to go along home now as soon as I hang up my mask, but I brewed this here coffee for you. Coffee? Put it here. Oh. <laughs> She's hot, John. Uh, coffee. Uncle Ben, you're an angel. <laughs> Don't know about that, Miss Jones. Ain't nobody else feed my wing. <laughs> uh, just put the pot and cup in my closet when you're through. I'll take care of them when I come on tonight. Sure thank you, Uncle Ben. Yes, sir. Hey! Hey, what? Hey, jailer! What's the matter with you now, Bascom? Take a look! The cell floor's wet! Water's running all over! This jail may have all the comforts of home, but I wouldn't give you much for your plumbing. Man, this building's so old, it's a wonder it doesn't all come apart. Bell must have stuck yeah, again. Water all over the floor. All right, all Go right. I'll take a deep breath. What a crummy job. You keep back, Bascom. Don't worry. You can do the waiting. I'm not putting my feet down in that water. Stay there in your bunk. I'll see what's the matter. Uh, let's see what's wrong with it. Why, you... Your undershirt's stuffed in the drain. Yeah. Oh, give me a gun. Oh, give me a gun. No, I'm going Get away from that gun, Cabinet! Sheriff Chris Olson discovered the bodies of his night deputy and the courthouse janitor when he came into his office at 8 o'clock. He immediately telephoned the Texas Rangers, and a short time later, Ranger Jace Pearson arrived. Jace Pearson. Am I glad to see you? It's been quite a while, Sheriff. Chase, this is a bad thing. Anything involving Bascom is. You got any line on him yet? No. Apparently he slipped out of town afoot. We don't even know what direction he took. Probably east up Rocky Valley. That's the quickest way into open country. Ranger Harris was ordered out on this assignment with me. Oh, where is he? I dropped him with a walkie-talkie at Two Mile Bridge on the way in. He's riding through the brush now, cutting for a trail. We ought to find out pretty soon if Bascom's still afoot. And if he isn't? Well, the highway patrol's already closed the main roads into this area. As soon as we get a localization, mounted units will move in and attempt to close the gaps. We'll get him, Sheriff. Well, I sure hope so. Oh, excuse me. Sheriff's office, Olson speaking. Sheriff, this is Bob McDougal out on Route 7. A man just stole my truck out of the field where I was working. You got a description? I didn't get a very good look at him. He was clear across the field. A medium-sized fellow wearing a pair of white coveralls, headed toward Prado. What kind of truck? A red half-ton pickup, 46 model. Anything else to identify it? Uh, It's kind of beat up. A grill's broken out in front. I think that's enough for us, McDougal. You know who it was? I think so. But you better get in as soon as you can and file a theft report, just the same. Farmer's truck was stolen about eight miles out of Route 7. It's Bascom, all right, Jace. White coveralls. Yeah, those jail suits sure show up. 
Come on, my unit's out front. We'll get this on the radio as we roll. Racing out of town on Route 7 with my double horse trailer still coupled, I radioed all units to be on the lookout for the truck. Then I contacted Ranger Harris through his walkie-talkie and asked him to meet us at Two Mile Bridge. He was there when we arrived. Nice timing, Ed. What's up, Chase? You got a line on Bascom. Let's get your horse loaded in with charcoal. Okay, Bascom's still afoot? No. He grabbed himself a truck about eight miles down the road. Yeah, he would. This side's clear, Chase. Right, watch your toes. Yeah, charcoal, you got company. In you go, boy. Yeah, better bring the walkie-talkie up front with you, Ed. Got it. Ready? Heave! All snug. Come on. Sheriff Olson, meet Ranger Harris. Howdy, Sheriff. Howdy, Ranger. So, that's your walkie-talkie, is it? Yeah, not much to it. Yeah, pretty contract, all right. Hangs right on the saddle. You can keep in touch with your headquarters with him? At Austin? No, no. Practice range about five miles. Closer the better. Strictly a field outfit. Oh, I see. All set? Maybe we can drive Mr. Bascom right into the roadblock at Dry Creek Crossroads. Sounds like you just made it. Yeah. What's the matter? Out of gas? Yeah, fill her up. Feed me my regular? Anything, fill her up. You betcha. <laughs> Say, isn't this old Bob McDougal's truck? Yeah, I'm taking it into Pareto. Well, he got all his repair work done at Libo. Not this time. Hurry it up, will you? He's trying to bubble over on me. Filler pipe must be bent. Mm-hmm. Old Mac sure beats up a truck, don't he? Yeah. Best farmer in the county, but awful careless about machinery. Seems come like on, come on, wind it up. That's enough gas. Okay, Mr. Okay. You must be in a hurry. I am. You're going to lose some time at Dry Creek. Yeah? Why? The law's got a roadblock at the crossroads for some reason or another, combing everybody through down to the seams of their drawers. Five and two tenths. That's one thirty one. Charge it. Hey. All right, you smart mechanic. Let's see how far that gas gets you. Radio operator. This is Jim Perry. Get me the Dry Creek store quick. I'm sorry, that line's busy. Break in on it. The highway patrol's got a roadblock there. I want to talk to one of the officers. Is this an emergency? A smart aleck in Bob McDougal's truck just clipped me for some gas. He was in too big a hurry, to be honest, and he deliberately took the wrong turn when I told him there were officers ahead. Mr. McDougal's truck, is that a red one? Sure, everybody knows that truck. A red pickup with a mechanic in white coveralls driving it. You're out on Route 7. What turn did the truck take? The crazy fool took off down the old big wash road. Tell a patrol they can box him in there. The road ends at the wash. Keep a watch on that road, Mr. Perry. That's the man they're looking for. What? It's Jack Bascom. He broke jail and killed two men at the county seat this morning. Jack Bascom? I can ring Dry Creek now. KTXA to Unit 10. KTXA to Unit 10. Unit 10 to KTXA. Go ahead, KTXA. Subject, Jack Bascom refused to pay for gasoline. He turned south from Route 7 at Perry's filling station, your vicinity. That's Perry's down there at the foot of the hill. 10-4. Unit 10 approaching Perry's now. We'll keep KTXA advised. Unit 10 clear. 10-4, KTXA Austin. Yeah, that's Jim Perry out in front, flagging us down now. Officers, I just got held up. Yeah, we know. For some gasoline. You know? Yeah, the radio, Jim. Now, that's the turn he took over there? Yeah, the big wash road. How long ago? Maybe ten minutes. Pretty good start on us, Jace. Yeah, for the kind of country there is down here. Let's don't let him get any more. We found the red pickup abandoned in the sandy bed of big wash four miles from the highway and radioed the surrounding units. John Bascom's tracks led straight into broken country beyond the wash. 
Eh, he couldn't go any further than the truck, and neither can we. Looks like work for the horses from here on, Ed. Let's get them out. Right. I'll give you a hand, Jeez. Easy, boy, easy. easy. Come on, Chaco. Better get the walkie-talkie, Ed. We ought to be able to contact any unit south of Dry Creek with it pretty soon. Yeah, I believe you're right. Hey, uh, you boys leaving me a foot, Jase? Uh, you can take the unit back, Sheriff. Maybe join the highway patrol at Dry Creek. Bascom's headed southwest. He probably figures to slip past the roadblocks. He might be making a wide detour over toward Highway 11. Might be. All set, Jase. Okay. Anything else I can do? Yeah, keep your fingers crossed. I will. Trailing Bascom isn't going to be any cinch for you boys. He's desperate, armed, and he knows his trails, Rich. I know. Uh, easy, boy. For good measure, I don't like the looks of those clouds over there. But all we need is a storm to wipe out what little sign he may leave. Well, let's get started, Ed. So yeah. long, boys. Good hunting. Thanks, Sheriff. Come on, sir. Yeah. You are listening to Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. And now we continue with tonight's case, The White Suit, an authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. By four o'clock, Ed Harris and I were deep into the rough country south of Big Wash. We'd continually cut back and forth for Bascom's tracks, finding them and then losing them again. It was slow work covering five miles to his one while he steadily built up his lead on us. He was infernally clever. Take it easy going down here, Jace. This canyon wall was any steeper, we'd be hanging by our collars. Ooh, who charcoal. Hey, wait a minute, Ed. Pull up. Whoa, boy. Whoa, now. Whoa. Now what, Jace? Bascom didn't slide down here like we thought. No? Look. There's the rock he pushed over from the rim to make the skid marks we've been following. See, it's lava, like the cap on the rim. Different from the rest of the rock down here. So we've got to climb back to the top. I'd have sworn he started down here to cross this canyon. That's what he wanted us to think. Anything to cost us time. The trouble is, we've got to follow out every one of these blind trails he's leaving us. Any one of them may be the McCoy. Yeah, he'll be to California before we ever get out of these badlands. He isn't to California yet. Don't worry, he's working as hard as we are. Up, Charlie. Lift them up. Come on, Red Horse. Make like a goat. Come on. Watch it, Ed. Oh, what a climb. It's getting late. Look at that sun, Jase. Yeah. Hey. That low sun has got its advantages. Oh, boy. Oh, now. No. Easy. Take a look at that slope over there across the canyon. That patch of sand past that big mesquite. Yeah, tracks and footprints. Then Bascom did cross the canyon after all. Probably someplace a little downstream. Jace, how come we didn't see those tracks when we started down here from up before? He couldn't have made them since then. We aren't that close behind him. No, the tracks were there before, we just didn't see them. Now the sun's low enough to throw longer shadows into the prince his boots made. Makes them twice as visible. Yeah, well, we better start looking for a place to cross ourselves. Now, let's climb a little higher first. I'm worried about that storm the way it's piling up. Up, red horse. Come on. Clouds are getting black, Jase. Probably loaded with static. We better try to make radio contact with the walkie-talkie while we can. We'll need to work from this high ground to get through. General call, Jase? Yeah. Yeah, suppose you try it now, Ed. Yeah. Unit 902 to unit in range. Unit 902 to unit in range. Unit 8 to unit 902. Go ahead, unit 902. Oh, boy. Oh. Here you are, Jase. Oh, charcoal. Unit 8 to Unit 902, go ahead. Unit 902 requests the location of Unit 8. Unit 8 is at the intersection of County 5 and State 11, 10 miles south of Dry Creek. 10-4. Unit 8 is now too far north. Fugitives still bearing toward Highway 11, approximately 12 miles south and east of Dry Creek. Suggest Unit 8 move south about 5 miles. Unit 8. Unit 902 has had no direct contact with Fugitive, but is following an identifiable trail. We'll report any change. Please relay to other units. Unit 902, clear. Unit 8, 10 4. Say, look, Jace. Bascom may stay on the other side of the canyon, or he may double back to this side. 
Why don't we save ourselves a lot of riding and split up for a bit? Might not be a bad idea. I'll take the canyon floor. It's sandy. Tracks will be easy to spot there. And you can work along this rim. All right. But watch yourself, Ed. You'll be in the open down there. Yeah, just let Bascom show himself once. That's all I want. Come on, Red Horse. We're going down. Easy now. Easy. Give me a chance to get to the bottom before you start, Jase. Okay. <laughs> Something about a manhunt sharpens the hunter's senses. I sat on the rim for long moments watching Ed Harris descend that canyon wall, feeling danger without being able to identify it. Suddenly, smoke blossomed behind a rock on the opposite rim. I saw Harris sag in his saddle before the horse carried him out of sight. Dim by distance came the lagging sound of the shot. Go, Charles. Go, boy. make some target. Probably realizes that by now and he'll really run. How bad are you hit? Oh, flesh wound clean. Just above the elbow here. Help me get this kerchief on it. I'll be all right. Pull your sleeve out of the way. Yeah. He would pick my left arm. How'd he know I was a southpaw? That's something we may be asking him right sudden. Are you okay now? Yeah, like new. No. Pick up his trail on the rim. We'll have to watch sharp. He's going to try to keep that white suit out of sight. Now that we're this close to him. Come on, Red Horse. Show that charcoal out of clock. Come on, Charcoal. Hey, get up. Come on, boy. Easy now. Just a little more. Almost to the top. Come on now. Whoa. Had a fat chance of picking up anybody's trail here, Jace. A herd of elephants could have crossed this loose shale without leaving a trace. Maybe. Let me look here. You see them? Yeah. Ants, a whole trail of them. Ants don't go after anything in this country they can't eat. Let's see what these are having for supper. Here we are. On this piece of shale. Yeah, blood. And then I did nail them. We got a wounded animal on our hands, Jace. May let go at us from behind any of these brush clumps. I don't think he's hurt so bad he won't keep on running. There's just a few drops here. I'm afraid you just creased him. That was pretty long range. Well, it won't be the next time I get him in my sights, I promise you that. I owe him something for this arm. Let's go. He's probably headed for that big mesquite picket. Yeah, he would. Come on, Red Horse. Up, charcoal. Hey, go. hey Jace. Look, out there in the open. His coveralls, he's peeled them off. And there he goes, into that big clump of brush across the clearing. Come on, let's go get him. Hey, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Circle around below him, Ed. Make a lot of racket like we're still together and hunting blind. Maybe you can flush him back between those big rocks. Okay, I'll try it, Jase. I'll hide charcoal out behind the side of them, and maybe we can rig up a little surprise party for Mr. Bascom when he comes through. But be careful, will you? He won't give you a chance. Don't give him one. Chance? That killer? Just let me get my hands on him. Come on, Red Horse. Hit that rock. Let's go. Hit Easy, Charcoal. Easy. We go this way. Ooh, oh boy. Under the shade of this rock for you, Charcoal. Easy now, boy. Quiet. Quiet. Head down, boy. Shh. Shh. Shut up, Charcoal. Senor, what, what do you want? We're Texas Rangers. Got him, Jay. Oh, Ranger. Yeah, I got him. But he's the wrong man. Wrong man? Well, what's he doing here? Ask him. Senores, I am scared. God, I'm here in these places. Nobody. I, I am a lonesome man. Mind my sheep. Then I heard the gun two, three times. When? No, a few minutes ago. I think maybe it's my friend Diego come from next valley with gun to kill coyote. We have much trouble with coyote here, senor. We aren't looking for coyotes. Where's your clothes? I go to see if it's my friend when this malo hombre, this very bad man, is jumped from the bush. 
His gun is very big. He took my clothes. He tell me not to move and he run. I stand still till he's gone. Then I run too. Which way did he go? How do I know, senor? Me, Pedro, I am scared to death. Sorry, Pedro. Forget about your clothes. You're a lucky man to be alive. Si, I know, senora. Si. You better get some more clothes before that storm hits. You aren't exactly dressed for bad weather. Oh, steady, Charco. Uh, looks like our surprise didn't come off, Ed. Let's get moving before Bascom builds up a lead on us again. Yeah, let's go, Red Hawk. Yeah, you, Charco. Harris and I picked up the trail shortly, but Bascom managed to stay ahead of us using a large bag of tricks to keep out of sight, even if he couldn't shake us. When the sun set behind towering thunderclouds, we were working our way down a wide, arid valley, keeping some distance apart. Hey, Jace, here's the tracks again. Pick them up, Charco. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, boy. See him? Ooh. There they are, heading right down there in the valley. Yeah, fresh as daisies, too. Yeah, no blow sand drifted into them at all. We better try that general call again, Ed. To report opposition? Yeah, look at the direction those tracks are taking. They've been swinging that way the last half hour. Yeah, I noticed that. Headed almost due east now. Bascom's pulling another big red herring on us. He made for Highway 11 long enough for us to report it and set up interception for him there. And, and then he swings straight east for Highway 13. Sort of catches us with our units down, don't it? Bascom's gambling that it does. Yeah, I'll try the call. Unit 902 to unit and range. 902 to unit and range. 902 to unit and range. Oh, it's no use, Jace. You can't raise anybody. We're too far out now. The weather isn't helping any either on this lower ground. Looks like we're in for real soaking before night. Yeah. Well, Bascom can't possibly be much ahead of us. Maybe we can tree him before he gets through to the highway. Handle him on our own from here on. You can't risk it, Ed. If he slips us and gets through to make a ride with somebody or steal another car, he'll be gone. Well, I guess here's where we separate, then. I'm kind of out of the running with this here bum arm. Mm -hmm. Give me the walkie-talkie, and I'll double back till I'm in range of the units on Highway 11 again. Yeah, that's good. It'll ride all right like that. Anything special for the boys? Ask them to request coverage on Highway 13 all the way to Prado. Keep trying till you get through. I'll stick on his trail. I'll have a relay into KDXA in half an hour. Soon as you do, you better head out toward Dry Creek and get that arm looked after. I'll wait till we've got Bascom. Good luck, Jace. Same to you, Ed. Come on, Charlie. Here. Yeah. Twenty minutes later, the rain struck with cloudburst intensity, bringing complete darkness. But not before John Bascom's tracks led me onto an adobe bench where sheep had been grazing. He'd removed his boots here, and his tracks blended with a maze of other bare footprints left by Mexican sheep herders. I rode on slowly. Suddenly, a small, rain-drenched boy stepped out from the brush. Charco nearly ran him down. Whoa, whoa, Charco. Steady, boy. Hey, you there. Hey, boy, Nino. Hey. Get up. He ran like a frightened little rabbit. Light winked as the door opened and closed, the door to an adobe shack. As I approached, I saw the blinds were tightly drawn, almost as though to prevent the leakage of any telltale light from the candle burning dimly inside. Oh, Charco, oh boy. Open up. Open up. Jenny, who are you? Texas Ranger. Get me in out of this rain. I want to ask you some questions. Oh, no, senor. I cannot let you in. My husband, he's sick. He's very sick. That's your boy that just ran in here? Si, senor, my Juanito. He was going to look for the mama goat. The storm, she's bad. You, you frightened him, senor. You gave me a turn for a minute, too. Look, I need a little help. Me, I would do anything for the Texas Ranger. I'm trailing a man, a very dangerous man. He must have passed close to here about the time the rain began. Where is he now? We have seen nothing, Juan. He told me nobody, senor. Maybe your husband did then. Anyway, I want out of this rain. Senor, no, you must not. My husband... This woman was deathly afraid, but her eyes told me she wasn't afraid of me. Of the storm, perhaps, of the sickness in her house. Or of the blanket-wrapped man lying on a bunk in the corner of the room with his bare feet protruding toward me. The door was thick. I pushed it inward as far as it had gone and stepped quickly behind me. Senor, please! Slide your gun out from under that blanket and drop it, Bascom. The gun, Bascom. Drop it or I'll break your other arm. Drop it! Uh, 
You would be stubborn, Bascom. Now you really got something to be sick about. Do something. I'm, I'm bleeding to death. You won't get off that easy. We're saving you for the electric chair. You got something I can use for bandages, senora? Oh, my arm. Oh, oh, Here, senor. Oh. Gracias. This'll do fine. Oh. How did you know? He was holding a gun on you and the boy, making you do what he said? See, how could you know? Your real husband's a sheep man, isn't he? Yes, senor. He's working near Prado now. Well, look at these bare feet sticking out here. You ever see an honest-to-goodness sheep man with his toes all crowded together from wearing cowboy boots? Better put some water on the heat. I'll need it to patch him up enough to take him in. John Bascom was tried in Live Oak County and found guilty of the murder of two men. On the second day of December 1947 at Huntsville Prison, his sentence was carried out. Death in the electric chair. And now, here again is the star of our show, Joel McRae. One of the pleasures afforded us here in this show is the large number of letters we receive asking for special information about the Texas Rangers. This week we received one, an especially interesting letter, in which the writer said she had heard of an official Rangers prayer and inquired if such a prayer actually existed. It does. The prayer was written by Captain Pierre Bernard Hill, chaplain of the Texas Rangers, and I should like you to hear it. O oh God, whose end is justice whose strength is all our stay. Be near and bless my mission as I go forth today. Let wisdom guide my actions. Let courage fill my heart. And help me, Lord, in every hour to do a ranger's part. Protect when danger threatens. Sustain when trails are rough. Help me to keep my standard high and smile at each rebuff. When night comes down upon me, I pray thee, Lord, be nigh, whether on lonely scout or camped under Texas sky. Keep me, O God, in life, and when my days shall end, forgive my sins and take me in. For Jesus' sake, amen. Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae will soon be seen in the Universal International Technicolor production, Frenchie. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Herb Butterfield, Barney Phillips, Bill Johnstone, Herb Ellis, and Lillian Bayer. This story was transcribed and adapted by Tom W. Blackburn, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. This is Hal Gibney speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Tonight, Theater Guild on the Air presents Judy Garland in the prize-winning novel Alice Adams, co-starring Thomas Mitchell. Another Sunday evening favorite is The $64 Question, starring Jack Parr. Tomorrow on the Station of the Chimes, you'll hear Gordon McRae as your singing master of ceremonies on one of his wonderful musical journeys aboard the show train. The Chimes are your invitation to the best in radio entertainment. Be sure to hear Judy Garland next in Theater Guild on NBC.